The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Marcus, and welcome to another episode of Toilet Side Wrestling Talk. Today's guest hails from the great state to sound of New York and began wrestling in 2009. He's worked for such promotions as Fight the World Wrestling, 2KW Pro Wrestling, Warriors of Wrestling, Family Wrestling Entertainment, Tier One Wrestling, East Coast Wrestling Association, and I could go on. He's the current Warriors of Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. He's also held the World One Heavyweight Championship, as well as the ECWA Unified Heavyweight Championship. Recently, Pro Wrestling Illustrated ranked at number 379 on their annual Top 500 Wrestlers list. I haven't been ranked for years now. Lots of red tape. The hang-up is I'm not a professional wrestler, but that really shouldn't hold me back. Anyways, share the ring with the likes of Ortiz, Chris Banks, Sonny Kiss, Mike Law, Mr. Grimm, Darius Carter, Logan Black, and I could go on, but I'm not gonna. So let's welcome today's guest, someone who not only believes the earth is round, but he also believes that the moon is real. I give you the five-star stud, Joey Ace. Hey, Joey, what's going on? What's up, Brad? That was an awesome highlight video, man. Well, you did all the work. <laughs> you know, I, I just had to use my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> you did all... Let me tell you a little, a quick little story. So I was at work today and I'm uh, trying to get this little like projector to, you know, to do on yeah. the wall. So I had to test it with something. So I used this highlights clip of yours. Mm-hmm. And when it said, you know, five star stud, this older man walked past me. He's like, five star stud, huh? He must have had fun getting that nickname. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, who, did someone give that nickname to you, or did is that yours? I I made that up. Um, you want to hear that story? Yeah, of course. All right, so I'm wait. Uh, I'm gonna age myself. I'm 33. I've been like 20, 20 years old, right? Okay. So I'm living in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And I'm in a housing project. I'm sitting on like a, a mattress in my grandmother's apartment. I'm in the bedroom and I got like this broken laptop that I'm watching uh, Ocean's 13 on. Okay. And, um, you know, at the time, I, I love like anyone who has a catchphrase, anyone like who has like a signature move that has a name to it, like, you know, The Rock, The Rock Bottom, or, and you know, if you smell what The Rock is cooking. And I was thinking of all these things for Joey Ace. And um, I'm like, oh, man, you know, like, who is Joey Ace? And at the time, I was really digging the Ocean's, you know, 11, 12, 13, like that whole series of movies. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, at while I was watching 13, um, I heard, you know, oh, like, I think it was Al Pacino. He was like, you know, I won, like, in his restaurant, I won, like, the Five Diamond Award five times. You know what that is? <laughs> five Cinco Diamantes. And I was just like. I need something in front of a Joey Ace name. And and I, I was watching a Rob Van Dam match after okay. that. And I'm like, still like five, five. I need something with five. And I'm like, oh, the five-star stud. 
and it so, just that, so it all came together. Yeah. So you, it wasn't like it wasn't reflection on your uh, standing with women conquests <laughs> like, or anything like that. That's what I had imagined. I'm like, wow, yeah, he really <clears throat> did have fun getting that's that. That's funny you say that. Um, I got, I, my friends always like, oh, you stud, and, and you know, yeah, that yeah. was always um, not really. Uh, <laughs> I was always like a ladies' man, but like. I don't know. I never called myself. Oh, I'm the five stars. So my friends would make fun of me. I'm like, oh, look yeah, at the five yeah, stars totally. walking in, and uh, I would Did, laugh, you know, and I'll get all like. Eh. So you're the Warriors wrestling champion right now, right? Yes. Heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Do you ever um, wear it around the house or like go to dinner or Target wearing the belt? I, I wear it around the house, and my girlfriend gets crazy with me. She's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> you know, it's, it's she's funny not. Huh? See, I'd be impressed if, like, if I was a woman and my boyfriend or husband uh, was walking around with a big gold championship, I'd be really impressed. It, but go on. How does she react? She just looks at me. She's like holding our dog and she's just looking at me like, can't be serious right now. Whatever, it's you. She's still playing with the dog, does it? And I'm just walking around with it like I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you won it, for, for the, you know, when you won it. Yeah. Did you go straight to, once you got back, uh, you know, behind the curtain, did you go straight to a mirror and like pose with it? Oh man, you or got even, me you know, let me, Let's here. back up. Your, how about your first, your the first belt you won? Did you like pose with it in front of you, the mirror? Oh my God, of course I did. But I, okay. I posed with everything in front of a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, when, I, when I first, my first like singles championship was the Warriors of Wrestling No Limits Championship, mm -hmm. and uh, I totally posed with that. Oh, I, really? I, there was, yeah, there was a mirror backstage, and I remember me just going, Yeah, I'm the champ now. <laughs> I call the shots. <laughs> like, I'm the man. Did you ever plan out, like, okay, so you win the, a belt for the first time. Did you ever plan out how you were going to react, how you were going to hold a belt if you ever one day got one? You know, it's funny, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, when I was younger, like when I was a kid, I would make my championship belts out of like cardboard. Uh -huh. And like my, my title, my two belts that I loved like trying to create were the Intercontinental uh -huh. um, and, and the Winged Eagle WWF Championship. So cool. I would get pictures of it from like the magazines and like literally like draw it and trace it out and like cut the cardboard out and put it on like a... There was like this vinyl tape that I found. Okay. And like uh, this cloth tape. And I would put pennies in the tape to make it weigh. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, Velcro. Like my dad used to get me all the supplies. Velcro uh -huh. the, the main plates to the to the tape. Wow. And I would and I would always do like the Brett the Hitman heart in the corner. Where he puts uh -huh. like one foot on the bottom, one foot on the second. Yeah, yeah. And like does, and I would always do that. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! I've never like had right. like a, a wrestler verbalize that to me, like in, in that oh. way. That's, <laughs> that's that's no, it's it's amazing. Um, okay, <clears throat> let's let's back up to Baby yeah. Joey, or not? Maybe not Baby. Uh -huh. Where uh, you you grew up in New York? Yes. Yeah. But uh, where about? So. Lower East Side from maybe I was about from when I was born to like I was about uh, nine, ten, moved to Brooklyn. And then uh -huh. from Brooklyn, when I got older, like turned 17, went back to the Lower East Side. And now currently okay. I'm in Queens. OK, so, OK. Did yeah, you, yeah. you have like a big family presence like in the area? Not really. It was just me growing up with my mom, my dad, a couple of my cousins and my grandmother. Okay, were your cousins so, like around your age and they were like your siblings? Sort of, sort of. Okay. Uh, we we like, we hung out, but I was more like so into like wrestling and, and, and that and that thing. And they were like on yeah. another realm of like life. Okay. You know, yeah. Oh, you know, I know exactly what you're saying actually. Yeah. Was, um, so d did you, like what was your personality amongst all these people? Like, where did well, you fit in? You know, really, I don't think I ever fit in. Uh, with, with them, it was very... Like, my mom, when uh, when I was really young, had got me that blue Hasbro wrestling like ring, the blue WWF one. Sure. And when she got me that, that's when my whole life changed. 
So I didn't really hang out or like get together with like my cousins unless it was about wrestling or like sports. So I was always the fanatic. So when like we would have like family get togethers, I was in the bedroom watching wrestling and like body slamming my pillows and playing (laughs) with my action figures. Like that was me. That was me growing up. So before your mom got you this ring, you you had already seen wrestling at that point? Or was that like your introduction to it? You, no, so I had see, already had seen wrestling. So, and, um, so who first, exposed oh, you? You know, my mom and my grandmother. Really? Yeah. Did my they? Did your grandma. grandma? Let's talk about this grandmother for a second. Yeah. When did yeah. she start watching wrestling? Way well before I was born. Like black you know, and white um, TV type. Maybe, maybe because she she's Puerto Rican, so she came into the states in the fifties. Okay. But I remember her telling me she went to a garden match with her friends and she saw blood and bugged out. <laughs> oh, really? And she was just, yeah, she was like, yo, these guys were hitting each other with chairs and I was, I was done. I was over it, but she always watched it on TV. So we, it was either that or, uh, <clears throat> or soap operas. So like novelas. So that was <laughs> always on. So okay. yeah, like. She kind of like got me into like the uh, lucha libre of the, mm-hmm. of of like pro wrestling, so wow. I would watch that. And like my mom was the WWF WCW. Oh my yeah. god! This so okay. Now that you're established pro wrestler, yeah, is it nice having this memory of like watching with your grandmother and your mom? Like, because if I had something like that that I shared in common with my mom, it would be, like, really, like, super special. Like, Yeah. Yeah, I think that was, like, our major bond with with my father, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I'll tell you a story. Uh, I don't think even I've told anyone, so you'd be the first one. Oh, Uh, breaking news. My my father was was incarcerated. So when I was six, he got locked up. When I came out, I was about nine, ten years old. He took me to a... I had went to my first WWE show, uh, WWF at the time, at the Garden, was the curtain call. So I remember my mom getting us tickets for that. But then out from, it was like 96. And then when he came out of, uh, when he came back home, it was January 1998. He took me to go meet um, Vader, I remember. I think it must have, yeah, it was Vader. And we were online at HMV record store in 34th Street, Manhattan. And I was just like, oh man, like there's WWF, the music volume two. And I'm looking at the CD case while we're in line. And I see Earl Hebner and I see Vader. And I remember going up to Vader and uh, he's like, uh, my my dad's like, oh, my my son's name is Joseph. And he's like, oh, good to meet you, Joseph, I'm Vader. And I'm like, oh man. And he's like, you gonna see me at the garden tonight? And I was like, dad, are you taking me to the garden? And he was like, (laughs) My dad looks at me and he goes, well, you want the, the, you want the CD or you want to go to the show? I ran back, put the CD down. Yeah. Let's go to the show. He goes to the box office. We get like a few of the tickets. It was like little, it was a sellout. Yeah. Two nosebleed seats. And man, we waited out there. We I saw Cactus Jack, Captain Lou Albano, Stone Cold, oh Steve my Austin, God. Sable. <coughs> All these guys come, excuse me, come into the arena. And like, I was blown away. And to have that experience with my father, to go up there and like sit there and like, it was up recently that I found that show on YouTube. Really? The whole show? Yeah. And the like, it's cut up in pieces. Yeah. But from a fan that was recording it. And I was, I think it was January 10th, 1998. And to like watch that back. 20 something like years almost wow. later i was like this is insane i remember yeah. like that 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 but yeah after like that bond the experience me you know i was like wow <laughs> yeah you'll and you'll always have that like so did yeah. you have a, a good relationship with your dad i had a i mean despite relationship with my father this oh, despite yeah. you know like the like the, his personal stuff it was me and him got together it was like mm-hmm. he was making up for lost time. Oh, a lot of making great. up for lost time. Yeah, so our thing was wrestling shows at the Garden or mm-hmm. the Coliseum. 
or baseball games at Shea. So we're a big Mets fan. Mets fan. Okay. That's <laughs> nice. Wow. Um, well, sorry about this past season and everything going wrong. Oh, man. <laughs> you know? But this is every season, man. You know? I know. You know, it was crazy. The stuff that happened with Baez. You know, yeah. like, weren't they booing him for a little while? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thing was, he was he wasn't doing so well, and we let him yeah. know that he wasn't doing well because that's New Yorkers. We're gonna let you know when you're messing totally. up. Totally. And when you're doing yeah, he, great, I mean, we're he, gonna give you the applause. He and he but, played along well. You know, he took it well. I thought. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm I'm from Chicago, so I hate the Cubs. <laughs> so I was really happy for him to get off that team. Um, or anyone really. So yeah. when you're like in high school, are are were you athletic at all? Did you participate in like? you know, any type of you know, sport. I wish I did. I wish I uh -huh. could go back, you know, and, but I didn't, I didn't. Uh, really? what, what I did participate in was tag, a lot of freeze tag, uh -huh. a lot of just recreational, just playing baseball with the fellas. Sure. Totally. Um, it's like things like that. Like my school had a wrestling team, uh -huh. but we would dog crap. We didn't like do anything. Yeah, yeah. So, but that was like my introduction kind of into backyard wrestling. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you if, if you'd heard of that yet. So, uh, so yeah. you, <laughs> how did you find out about backyard wrestling? Oh, man, I must have been going into the 10th grade, 10th, mm -hmm. 10th grade, when I knew what guys were doing. The okay. thing about that was I was doing it in junior high school. Okay. So... In Brooklyn, we like the building that like, me and my like my my parents grew up in, like my they raised me in. There was like this courtyard, and what I would do in the courtyard was I would strap rope up to this pipe. It was like a drain pipe okay. that was in front of the building, and it like I connected the the rope to the fence, and I would get boxes, and we would just have matches oh with like my neighbors in there. Oh, awesome! Yeah, and so, um, and, so, and so then <coughs> when you see backyard wrestling, you know, when you're in the 10th grade or 11th grade, um, did, did that had you already had like the idea that you wanted to become a pro wrestler or this you were just you were just a fan at that point? I felt like I was maybe just a fan. Uh, I okay. didn't know the it's like my mind wasn't so, oh, man, this is what I want to do for a living. Okay. I didn't know quite yet what I wanted to do. Uh, but I was feeling like this is, could be something there. Uh, when, once, like, I, I, I kind of got into it more, um, I didn't like it. It wasn't, it was fun at times, but then it wasn't fun. Okay. So when, when it stopped being fun, I stopped doing it. Okay. What happened was... I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I'm like, you know, life kind of happened. Mm -hmm. My mother was really sick. You know, I was trying to get out of high school. My dad had just passed away. I was 16 when he passed oh, away. Man. Yeah. So it was a lot of like, all right, I got to take care of the family. I couldn't really kind of focus and think about yeah. wrestling. Um, but uh, I ended up watching, it was a, a series of matches. And I said this like in a, another uh podcast it was uh -huh. aj styles and christopher daniels oh for awesome. some reason impact wrestling like at the time tna hooked me so hard i don't know what it was like i i love wwf wwe wcw ecw like japan all those like europe all that uh -huh. all the wrestling all over the world but for some reason I was hooked on TNA. I couldn't like stop watching it because I think it was also the indies. The guys that were in the indies I saw work there. Yeah, for sure. And it made it seem possible. Oh, because okay. I was following the indies. And how old are you at that point? 17, 18. Wow. And so did you I remember did you have, go, go on. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, did you have, like, did you have plans in place for after high school? Or did anyone have plans uh, for you in place? I was like, okay. I was like, maybe I'll go to school. I'll go back to, I'll go to college. Mm -hmm. I'll do a two-year. 
then All maybe right. if, I'm, if I'm good, maybe if I feel like it, I'll do another two. I'll do get my associate in something, get my, you know. Yeah. But I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And at the time, I was leaning towards being a trainer because I was okay. like, oh, I like personal training. I like helping people. I like working out, being in shape and just doing that stuff. Then I saw that match. It was that Iron Man match with AJ and, and uh, Christopher Daniels. Sure. And I said, oh, man. Then I was watching. I remember the Iron Man match with Sean and Brett. Yeah. And I watched it over and over and over again. But then I watched this highlight reel. And it was on the WrestleMania 20 DVD. It was like the okay. best of the top 10 WrestleMania matches of all time. <clears throat> At that time. And the Iron Man match was number one. And the music. And the way they did the intros and the production of of it felt like it gave me goosebumps. It gives me goosebumps thinking about wow. it and telling you about it, Brad. Uh -huh. Because I was like, this is what I want to do. So did you share this with anyone, this, this feeling? Like, do you tell your grandmother, your mom, like, I'm thinking you know, about doing this? I don't... You, I never told my grandmother that I was like, hey, I want to be a wrestler. I never yeah. remember me telling her that. I remember just doing okay. it. I never told my mother either that, hey, I want to be a wrestler. Um, I may have told girlfriends at the time. Sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, totally. Uh, you have to. And like maybe a couple of friends, but that was mm -hmm. it. Um, but my emotions about it, I kind of kept, I kept to myself till later. Okay. Oh, oh gosh. I remember like some of my friends when I was younger were like, they, they, they tell me now. And I knew this then that they were worried about me. Uh, that they right. were like, you're not going to get anywhere wrestling. And it was just like, I get it. Like, I know where we came from. We came mm -hmm. from nothing. So for me to tell you, Hey, I want to do this thing and wrestle in arenas or rec centers or wherever seems like kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and like going to shows, you're like, oh, yeah, you're like 100 pounds soaking wet. Look at these guys. You're going to get in the ring with them? Yeah, Joey. So, <laughs> did anyone, but was anyone supportive? <clears throat> um, to, to, to tell you the truth, to think about it, probably not. Um, really? I don't think. So um, how, is, how is that on your psyche at the time? Like, For me, it was tunnel vision. I okay. What what I did was, I would, uh, watch bodybuilding videos, hmm. like legit, like no lie, like old Arnold Schwarzenegger videos. Yeah, yeah. I would read Muscle and Fitness. I would read Muscle Mag. I would read Esquire, GQ, Maxim of all these actors and you know trainers and actors and actresses, and their come up. Whenever I felt down, mm -hmm. I went to that. Really? And I would listen to like just, you know, five rules of success or like this is like follow your dream, do this, do that. And that was like my kind of like my goal to um, I okay. have one 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 of my uncle, my uncle Danny, and mm -hmm. he would like hit me off with a few bucks here and there to do these wrestling matches when I didn't have the funds to like, you know, travel. Yeah, yeah. In the very, very beginning. But it's like, that was like my support. But I felt I was too wrapped up in family at the time to like kind of like, <laughs> taking care of like my mom navigating yeah, through that. Sure. So it wasn't, that's what my thing was. So when I was going to work, I would listen to things in the morning. Wow. Before I went to and bed, that would, kind of keep you. <clears throat> that would keep me on. Um, and it's it's weird. Like I, I was living in Lower East Side, and like my view mm -hmm. out of the building was all of the financial district, all of Lower Manhattan. And I would look outside and just kind of think about, you know, yeah, I could sit and think, oh man, I have no one. Mm -hmm. But there's a story in every light that I'm looking at, every window. Every car that I see, there's a story. Yeah. And in a morbid way, I'm like, no one's going to care enough about what I'm doing 
So why should I uh, put so much energy into looking for validation when I'm simply just here validating myself? And I yeah. see this and I'm like, what if that kid over there is looking at me on the TV? Like if I make it, when I do make yeah. it, th maybe that kid is feeling the way I'm feeling now and going through some craziness in life and I inspire that kid. Can I ask you a question? What's do up? you do any talks? No. I mean, like, like speaking engagements to like young no. kids and stuff? <laughs> or no. I mean like teen and, um, wow. Okay, well you, I think you have like a, a, a um, th I think this is something after wrestling you should pursue. <laughs> Just based on like the last 15 minutes, like you have very yeah, yeah. good um, ways of dealing and thinking about things. Uh, it's very uh, unique. Um, but anyways, all right. So what do you do? You, okay. I want to, I'm going to pursue this. I want to become a pro wrestler. Do you, how do you find a trainer? Like, are there a bunch and you have to kind of. <clears throat> so uh, that's a uh, great question. So when I was about 19, 18, 19, I went to Gleason's gym, world famous okay. Gleason's gym, you know, everyone's yeah. trained there. Uh, I went there, met uh, um, Johnny Rods. Johnny's like, you know, it's three thousand dollars to train, but fifteen hundred if you go if you go to school. I'm like, oh man. So it looks like I'm going back to school, but I don't even have fifteen hundred dollars, you know. Yeah. Um. So, I kind of canceled that. I'm like, there's gonna be somewhere, somewhere I'm gonna. There's another school. I, I don't look into it. Mm -hmm. Looked at so um, and I found. A school in New Jersey that was I could get to, okay. and then one in Long Island. The one in New Jersey was way close. It was right there. The one in Long Island was super far. And through backyard wrestling guys, connections that I had made already, I said, you know what? Me and my friend Matt at the time, and this kid uh, Chris, this big guy that used to you know wrestle at Gleason's, says, let's go to Long Island. So we go to FTW. Uh, wrestling academy is fight the world mm -hmm. wrestling at the time yep so this is like 2009 we go and uh the guy sean stern is like hey man like i got a couple of guys that are in the city maybe you want to ride with them cool car uh, carpool with them and see i'm like oh cool like i'll meet i'll awesome. come tuesday on the train and meet them he's mm -hmm. like yeah man come through so we do our matches we warm up we train and he was like, yeah, like, I'll get you in contact with them. So everybody meets up. So Tuesday, the net, that Tuesday comes around and I meet. And this is um, Angel Ortiz. Ortiz from okay. Ortiz and Santana, uh, sure. AEW. Wow. And I meet him and it was his friend Joey and this other friend, Will, that I had, I had known prior mm -hmm. that came out. And we, we set up a, a little, like, just kind of group, like, carpool. And we became okay. super close. And um, that's how it happened. I ended up training at FTW for about a year and a half. And then from that, I just kind of went to everywhere else and got my feet wet. Was, was your body physically <coughs> ready um, for, for, you know, when you got to training? Did you think that you were ready for what was about to happen? No, as far as training for the it. first time. For training, um, I had put on some weight. So I was wrestling. Okay. I, was, I was training and then... When I started wrestling, I was putting on weight. So I was working okay. out a whole lot and then training a whole lot. Um, really not sleeping. Well, that kind of that kind of hurt me, set me back a little bit. <sighs> but sure. other than that, like I was fine. Like I was like, all right, this wrestling is like as long as I get some sleep, I'll be good, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> totally. Were you nervous yeah. the night before the first your first day of training? I was excited. Oh, okay, good. So like when you woke yeah. up the next morning, you're like, All right, let's do this. All right, let's go. Um, I was more nervous about meeting people. Uh, that was my thing. I was like, oh. but you know, I what was, was like, the hardest thing like the first day. Was it that like meeting everybody? For me, yeah. It was like, hey, okay. what's up? You know how you doing, huh? And it was intimidating because <clears throat> you don't know who's better than you. You don't know who's below oh, you. Oh yeah. You don't know what you don't like. The unknown is what intimidated me. But I okay. was like, hey man, I'm from New York City. You know, like. Yeah, this yeah, isn't totally. anything. This is a piece of cake, <laughs> you know. Uh, once I got that, like, kind of like in my head, I was like, "Okay, I'm fine." Um, okay. And then once I got into it, it was like, "Okay, let's go." <laughs>
And 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 so like you were able to take it. Did you did you pick it up quickly? Yeah, like the taking bumps and hitting the ropes and the the funny thing about that was when I was backyard wrestling in Brooklyn, I had okay. a friend of mine who had a wrestling ring and I I uh, persuaded him to have that ring in my backyard. The idea for me, what I had that no one knew about was I'll get to use this ring when no one's around. Yeah. And I'll oh, get to like right. practice um, yeah. without having to pay for it. Cause I'm, I'm poor. I don't have any money. So that's what I did. I like, scrammed up oh enough God. money to rent my friends, uh, my, my friend, Mike, uh, God bless his soul. I love him to death. Um, he had this giant red truck and we made two trips. So we were in Canarsie in Brooklyn. 45 uh -huh. minutes to Rockaway Park, uh, Rock, uh, Far Rockaway, picked up this ring in two trips and took wow. it to my house and constructed it. Yeah. How long did you have it for? About a year, maybe. Wow, that's amazing. So that's before like a, I went into like, yeah. It, it, it's like, like a, an Olympic swimmer <coughs> having an Olympic sized pool like in their backyard, you know, like your craft, you have it right there. That's what it was. And was it a lot of like you by yourself? Yeah. You know, um, ironically enough, I would set up like this little camera I had and I would set it up on my bathroom window. Cause like my <laughs> bathroom window, it, oh, like, yeah. that, it looked like it was like, oh, hard cam. And I could see like the ring, the whole ring and me. And I would run the ropes and I would watch myself run the ropes. I would watch myself bump, flip, bump, do my own drills oh my by gosh. myself. And yeah. do, you, do you still have these videos? Oh, no, I don't have those. I wish I did. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, it was probably, or it was in 2009, before we yeah. had all these storage options and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> man, it was up. But I do have this, a friend of mine does have a video of me wrestling, doing a show in my backyard. But we, before that, we had a, a ring built. Like, we built our own, like, ring out of tiles oh, and yeah. wood. And, and Yeah. Wow, that's that's. Do you ever get injured, like, or see someone get like in, crazy injury, like in like a backyard? No, thank God I didn't. Oh, thank okay. God God. God. We we had this. Well, we had this one kid. Uh, mm -hmm. He take a lot of punishment, and we used to beat him up. And his name was Joseph, <laughs> and uh, he was short kid. He looked like uh, a little dynamite kid. Okay. And uh, yeah, I love that kid, <laughs> but that kid would like jump off the ladder and like wait look get up and smile like he was the happiest oh, in the world <laughs> i think you he could had take a like, beating yeah i think i think he was kind of like on the spectrum a little bit okay uh, okay because he was just like he loved wrestling and mm -hmm. um but he just loved being a, and i would always have him around because uh, <laughs> he was such a cool guy but oh man, God bless his soul. He, yes, he would, he would, he would do flips off the ladder and just like yes. And I'm like, oh my God, like you, you're insane. This, Stop. This kid is a little story in your wrestling journey. You know, he's part of it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, like, I, the, and I love him. The, I love him. If I say, if I say, he, if he heard this and watches, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm on the spectrum. Come here, let's <laughs> he'll be one of those kids. Um, but oh man, I love, I love him to death, man. Uh, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like you're so in training. How long before, um, you know, first day of training and first match? Does does somebody do? What's the trainers looking for when they tell you you're ready for your match, first match? So, my first set of like matches were kind of like squash matches, but ironically, it was funny. I only did, I remember doing just one squash. I okay. trained for about a few weeks. The deck, the show was coming up, and he was like, "Yo, yo, put you on." You're ready. You just go in there and uh, take a few bumps and, and and then get pinned and you're out. Did you feel I ready? Remember. No. Well, okay. yeah, no. Um, I didn't have gear. I didn't have anything. I remember having like these board shorts and these kick pads. <laughs> <coughs> and I went in, excuse me, I went in, got beat up, got my licks, and uh, I got out. Um, and I remember it was uh, the, the show – was i think ftw summer summer of sin i, I think yeah. and it was big jim sullivan there's a name out there in long island and he was doing a gauntlet and i was a part of the gauntlet oh okay. but i remember jake the snake being on that show really yeah did you jake get to interact with him at all 
Like yeah. even like bad. Is yeah, I remember like sitting down with him and talking, having a few like just words. And he was able to, I mean, because he, he had a little bit of a rough time, you know, yeah, he, years ago. Was he was he okay at the time? Like cleanish? I remember, I remember, sort of. I remember me getting him an energy drink and us like splitting oh. one because he didn't want to take, he didn't want to drink the whole thing. Uh, and that's all I remember from that night though with him. The, Did you the learn next, anything remember, from him? Nah, that night, no. I was mm -hmm. too, I didn't know what to ask. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, you but were I just remember too, this match. too young. Yeah, I felt, yeah, too young. I didn't know what I was thinking about, where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. um, I had the Joey Ace name, but nothing else. Um, in my okay. head, I kind of knew. Um, when I, I remember my second match was a big like tag team uh kind of like a gauntlet it was like a 14 tag team match a four corners tag team match and i remember okay. like that and then going doing that and then going wait a minute now i'm starting to kind of get what's up oh okay then having a, my first one-on-one -on -one was with uh ortiz uh -huh. uh, in october of 2009 I remember that match and then having another match right after that with Sam Shields. Okay. And I think that's the one where I, I clicked. It was like, oh, okay, Joey, this is what you need to do. So was that, at that point, was that like the first time you like felt comfortable in the ring? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then yeah. from there, did it completely change how you were like before a match and during a match? Yeah, but it was very, it was very like that thought process was like in its infant, in its infancy. Um, hey. I, I was still thinking spots and doing this and that, but not thinking so much of moments and how to captivate people. Oh, I was wow. still coming in like still very unsure of who i was mm -hmm. as a person uh like i was still growing i was still like i don't know what to do here uh what should i do i don't know and i was very uh like kind of not like confused but then not mm -hmm. knowing where to go and not knowing what to do so just kind of living in the moment but sure. being very anxious going through it Oh yeah, I mean, not I, having, I mean, yeah, like not having even, the confidence almost. Could you could you have like a social life at that time, like with yeah, tra while training, you can still like have relationships and. That was the that was the difficult part. It was okay. it was wrestling, right? Having mm -hmm. this love, then having my job because I needed to make money. Sure. Social life, and then having a trying to have a relationship. It was yeah. too much at the time. And I did that for years, but didn't mm. realize it was too much. You know, you have your family, oh. you have your life, like your, your home life, family, uh -huh. work, wrestling, relationship. How do you divide? You can't. Yeah, yeah. And how does that yeah. other person who's in the relationship with <laughs> you look at that, you know, and how do they think you should prioritize your time? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I was too young for, mm -hmm. for, uh, if I could go back, if I could tell any young aspiring wrestler now, uh -huh. I'll say, listen, focus on having your job, wrestling, and a social life, like a supportive mm -hmm. like group of friends. And yeah, maybe if yeah. it's just one or two friends, but don't think so much of trying to have it all. I was like trying to have it all. Yeah, um, yeah. And that, that's going to, things are going to fall apart when you do that. You got to have your focus kind of like on one, one or two things at max. Sure. But yeah, but that's, that's kind of like why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you you've had like a ton of like gold. You know, is uh -huh. that important to you? Like, is do do you measure yourself on like belts or just uh, you know the work in the ring? Both. Um, okay. I feel like the work rate's just as important as the stuff in the ring, like in, as mm -hmm. as like the, the accolades. But I feel like when you have a championship, you're the bearer. You're the flag bearer of that company. Mm -hmm. 
So right now I'm the Warriors wrestling champ. I'm I'm the I'm the flag keeper. You know, I'm the I'm the guy yeah, waving yeah. the flag of Warriors. So it's a lot of like up to me to mm -hmm. uh represent the company. Uh, also the way I want to represent the company, but which is all like as good as I can make it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, and did and somebody put as many teach you that? Like like early on, like this is <coughs> You act as whole, you know, uh, conduct yourself, and um, I thought growing up, when you were the boss, mm -hmm. or or you ran your own life, like you live your life, you live your life with integrity, and you mm -hmm. do things, you know, that aren't going to have a detriment on your character. So mm -hmm. you want to like, I kind of think about it as being like the hero of my own story okay in a sense um so i don't feel like no one's ever said hey listen if we're gonna give you the title you're the man mm -hmm. um i've always heard that through like things i've watched um so for me it was like all right like i would always joke around with my, my friends and i'm like i'm the man or like yeah you're the man <laughs> but like what is the man what is the man like sure. the man is gonna take care of whatever he needs to take care of, with the most integ like with utmost integrity. So, sure. if I have, if the company looked and said, "Hey, we're gonna invest in you, and we want you the top guy," mm -hmm. you have to be the top guy, and represent us in a way. Yeah. And I saw guys who were given the brass ring and the top, you know, of yeah. and they they bombed. And I looked really? at that as lessons. I said, I didn't want to mess up. So I'm not yeah, going to yeah. I'm not going to go over here and do this. I'm not going to crap on this. Like, if they're giving me something, I'm going to make that into, like, whatever I can make it as yeah, long as I yeah. have it. Um, wow. So I, I learned a lot through other people's mistakes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's But that's the best yeah. way to do it, probably. Yeah. So, uh, was it like a month ago, Pro Wrestling Illustrated? The yeah. PWI 500. How do you mm -hmm. find out about that? How does someone who's on the list find out? Uh, I found out through ECWA promoter. Okay. And got like a, a message with a picture of it. Oh, really? <laughs> because like I didn't see like... it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it on Twitter first. Uh -huh. I saw it. Wow. So when I got the message, oh, and that's usually kind of like how I find out things. Um, yeah, like I'll yeah. get a message from somewhere because I'm on the subway or I'm working or I'm training or I'm like, you know, I'll get a message like, oh, hey, uh, we just saw this. Congrats. And I'm like, oh, what? And then I'll look yeah, and go, oh, man. And yeah. so like, are you, like you're by yourself, like, do you at least like crack a smile? Like, hey, nice. I go, oh, man, that's cool. And then I'll cry later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Do you, okay. Yeah. So did you get a hard copy of it? Um, or not even like get, online. Have you seen? Did you see the whole list? Yeah, I haven't bought the the uh, the physical copy yet. Just yeah, yet. but like I when I was just in came it out. prior. Yeah, it I, did. I got it from a subscription, you know. But like, I think like yeah. the like to go out and buy it, it just happened. Do, yeah. Do you do you do you first look at who's in front of you, and or do you look who's behind you on the list? Uh, nah. I just look at my number and I just yeah. want to see it grow. Um, uh -huh. But the fact that I'm in it is like this insane thing because, you know, I would get that magazine with my dad at a newsstand yeah, in, in Manhattan or on the train station. You know, you, you see like, so like I would grab it and I look through it and see everybody's, you know, like all these wrestlers that grew up watching. And yeah, yeah. I'm looking. I'm now. I'm looking at it, and then I see my name with all these wrestlers that I grew up watching. Oh and it's god. like, oh yeah. my god! Like it's still surreal. It's still like doesn't feel. It feels like a dream. So when I look at my name, I'm like, I don't look at who's who's back me, who's in yeah. front of me. I'm like, oh my god, I'm in it. But then <clears throat> the competitive part of me goes, all right, you're in it. Now you got to get higher and higher and higher. Yeah, yeah. And so, and then maybe, but do you do you take like a night to be to like revel in it at all? Yeah, 
I do. Yeah, nice. Good, good, yeah, I good. You know, that's yeah, I honest. Do. I, I do the same thing. Good. Do, do you, uh, um, what was he going to say? All right, I'm going to ha- have to let you go in a few moments just so yeah. I don't get divorced. Uh, not from you, obviously, <laughs> from a lady. Oh, this is what I wanted to ask you. Um, did, so do you have like a, a, a girlfriend now? Yeah, yeah. And is is she um, supportive of, of, of super wrestling? Super supportive. Super supportive. Is she I can't, a wrestling I can't fan? Ask. No, she doesn't watch wrestling. Um, so it's great that she doesn't watch it. It's like in a, uh, she doesn't look at it like it's just like she'll look at it as if she's watching um, a movie. But yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily watch a lot of my stuff with her and go, oh, what about this? It's more of like the home life stuff that, oh, okay, the dog's taking care of what I leave. Uh, <laughs> dog's <laughs> fed, like everything is set up in the in the house, like all good. So that's usually kind of like what I need and what I want. Like, okay, that's yeah, the yeah. That's, that I, like, let me ask you know. a question. And this, I'm not trying to make no, no, this, go ahead. this sexist at all. Who's responsible for making dinner every night? We both do it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. And, and all right, I just I didn't hear that. That's great. Has she come? Has she seen come to a match? That cage match. That oh, she came. Yeah, back. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Now yeah. later that evening, I'm not talking about bedroom stuff. Could you tell she was like a little more impressed with you? You know what? She she. I remember her looking at me like it was amazing. You didn't play to the people enough. Those people came to see you. And I go, wow. She goes, yeah. Those people paid money to see you, Joey. And you do didn't better next time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, man. Oh. And then I was, I, I was living with that for like the, for a few days. Like, crap. Uh-huh. I, didn't, I didn't give them. And then that, that, ha- <laughs> after that, it ended up being a, a thing where I would do a post match promo at Warriors of Wrestling. <laughs> to kind of thank thank everyone totally. for coming, and, and it would it would be the uh, I, I call it my Darius Carter says it's the John Cena speech at the at, at the, the yeah that's totally this is what I was thinking. <laughs> I do that's that hilarious because of her. <laughs> oh God! All right, well, nice. She's got a little imprint, a little fingerprint on your career. Yeah, but it, Joey- was, it was more of an like, I'll show you. But this, this, um, she sounds. I, does she have a sister? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I no, can get divorced. I'm married right now, but that's you know, no, a couple just, signatures. It's just, and done. It's, it's just her and her brother. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe cloning technology will happen soon. <laughs> Anyways, can I ask you four non um, wrestling related yes or no questions? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Do you know who Darman is? No. Okay. Later tonight, D H A R Man. Type that into YouTube, and it's insane. And not not insane like violence or sexuality or anything. You just gotta go watch this. I don't even know how to describe it, but I think uh, you should take a look tonight. Anyways, has anyone ever body shamed you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Come think about it. But f- have you ever like looked at a dog or a cat and said to yourself, "Man, that looks like it tastes good." No. Okay. And finally, are you afraid of smoked meats? No. No fear. Awesome. All right, you did four for four. That's you did amazing. Um, Joey, where are you? Um, where are you uh, going to be next? Where are you wrestling next? Right now, uh, it's Warriors of Wrestling coming up in no- okay. uh, November. I think the November thirteenth. Oh, actually, no, I'm I'm lying. To you. November sixth. It's ECWA. It's me uh-huh. against Eric Martin. Oh, cool. Uh, 
And then after that, it's Warriors the rest of the next weekend. And it's will you uh, be defending the championship there? On this on this match, no, it's an intergender tag team match. It's oh, me cool. and genocide. Really? Or genocide. I'm I, I miss I mispronounced <laughs> her name. Against Deanna Perrazzo and uh Steve Macklin. Wow. Yeah. So is it is it easy to get up for a match like that? Like Get excited yeah, I gotta get my it. game face on, man. I yeah, get yeah, my yeah. game face on, you know. Oh, okay. Before yeah. I let you go, do you have any like ma match day rituals that like you have to do before? Usually, it's about maybe a hundred squats, a hundred push-ups, and I'm listening to Action Bronson before a match. Oh, really? Totally. Yeah, yeah. And, and you do this prior, like, like in the <laughs> morning or when you get to like the venue? When I get to the venue. Oh wow! Takes them a long time. I go away, listen uh -huh. to my headphones, put it on. Yeah. And that's what, I, that's my I know I keep. I know I keep saying this is the last. This is the last <laughs> question. But um, you know the 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 t the stuff you used to listen to to get you like motivated. You're talking yeah. about earlier. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you've had to turn to that? This morning. Really? So yeah. this is just like a, like a part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, Joey, we learned a lot today. Um, I'm going to look into 